Hello, I'm Negin Harabi from Stanford, and today I'm presenting our paper on learning an action conditional model for haptic texture generation. Let's just start with a short overview. Virtual reality has a diverse variety of applications. However, unfortunately, most of the commercially available VR environments tend to lack the multimodal sensory feedback that we as humans receive as we interact with objects in real life. For example, humans are conditioned to expect the sense of texture when interacting with an object. This haptic sensory feedback in response to users' interactions is desirable for an immersive system, and it depends on material properties and users' interactions in a complex manner, making it challenging to model. In this work, we are interested in generating haptic texture feedback signals using a deep learning-based generative action conditional model. Our model uses data from a vision-based tactile sensor gel site and user's action as input and predicts and induce acceleration. We show that our model outperforms a state-of-the-art haptic texture generation method using a Welsh t-test and show that our method learns to associate materials that feel similar to each other based on their representation encoding in Tizzy space. We also provide preliminary evidence regarding our model's capability for generalizing to new materials. We do this by looking at the encoding of these textures in Tizzy space. Let's go back to the motivation and talk about our work in more detail. As previously mentioned, realistic environments can benefit from rich multimodal sensory feedback, including the haptic texture. To this end, several researchers have worked on texture rendering using linear predictive coding, autoregressive moving average, and piecewise autoregressive models. However, these approaches develop a separate model for each texture. This makes it hard for them to scale to the unlimited variety of textures in the work. In this paper, we focus on data-driven modeling of the vibratory feedback that different textures induce in a probe as it is moved over a surface. This feedback is linked to humans' perceptual impression of texture and is a function of the, is a function of the probe's action as well as the texture. As we were interested in using a data-driven method, we needed a data set. We used the publicly available data set of the Pen Haptic Texture Toolkit called the HAT. HAT includes raw data used to create haptic texture model for 100 different materials from diverse categories, including paper, metal, fabric, etc. The original data were collected by a sensorized pen providing six degrees of freedom force torque reading, acceleration measurements, as well as positional and orientational tracking of the pen's top. We have augmented this data set with gel site images. Using this sensor, we have collected videos of five presses on 93 out of 100 materials due to availability. We have made this data set publicly available. You might wonder, what is a gel site? Gel site is a vision-based high-resolution tactile sensor made of a piece of clear elastomer Coated, a, coated with a reflecting membrane. A video recording camera is attached to the other side of this elastomer and captures its deformation during contact. As previously mentioned, we use a novel learning-based method for haptic texture generation. This model takes as input an image from the gel site and force and speed of the user on that texture during a tool-mediated interaction. Given this input, we train a model that predicts the magnitude of the discrete fast Fourier transform of the generated acceleration in the handheld probe. The architecture that enables the short-time DFT prediction of our model consists of the following. We use a structure similar to AlexNet as image encoder. This encoder was chosen based on its optimal performance on the proxy task of classifying the gel site images. The architecture is trained in two stages. First, we train the image encoder for texture classification using a cross entropy loss. Afterward, we freeze these pre trained weights and use the output of the image encoder as input to the texture encoder. We then train an architecture that encodes gel site images into a texture representation vector 
and encodes the force and velocity of the user into an action vector. Texture and action representation are then combined and fed into an acceleration predictor module for predicting the DFD magnitude of the accelerations. As loss, we choose the Euclidean distance between the ground truth and predicted magnitude up to 1000 Hertz. We evaluate the performance of a given model using the following loss calculation. I'll explain the process first and then show how it works with real data. For each sample point, we take the DFD magnitude of the ground truth signal and compare it to the DFD prediction of the model. The loss of the model is defined as the Euclidean distance of these two DFDs. When comparing the performance of two models on a data point, we calculate the difference in the associated loss of each model. Note that loss one minus loss two is positive when model two is outperforming model one. Using this explained comparison method, we compare our model to the piecewise autoregressive model used in a paper by Calbertson et al., which is a state-of-art method for vibration-based texture rendering. For comparison, we look at the value of the baseline loss minus our model's loss. This value is positive when our model is outperforming the baseline. We calculate this value for all the data points in the test set and report the average as well as 25 and 75% quartiles per material. For a direct comparison to the baseline, we first train one model per material by only feeding the action representation vector into the acceleration predictor module and removing the texture representation vector. Our model significantly outperforms the baseline model on 65 out of 93 materials using Welsh t-test in this situation. Afterwards, we train the joint model for all the materials by adding a gel site image as an input to the model. To assess the generalization capabilities of this unified model, only in its capabilities to generalize to new actions, we keep the gel site image input the same as one of the training set and use a new portion speed from the test set. This would be similar to a scenario where the material's label is known and one is trying to render it given a new action. This unified model significantly outperforms the baseline on 78 out of 93 materials using Welsh t-test. Looking at the TISNI visualization of the representation vector learned by the material encoder provides great insight on the possible source of improvement for our unified model. TISNI visualizes high dimensional vector in a lower dimensional space. The TISNI plot shows that our texture encoder has learned to place materials that feel similar closer to each other. For example, our encoder has created approximate clusters for all the carpets, meshes, similar floor tiles, bricks and stones, similar sandpapers, similar metals, and other groups with similar textures. Our hypothesis is that a unified model enables our network to share data between similar materials and cover a wider range of force and speed. Thereby, the unified model achieves an improved generalization performance. We also provide preliminary evidence regarding our model's capability for generalizing to materials not in its training set. We do this by looking at the placement of the latent representation of these materials in the TISNI space. The orange crosses in this figure represent 20 new materials. For example, materials with carpet-like textures were placed near other carpets. The new floor tiles were placed close to other floor tiles as well. It is important to note, however, that our method had difficulty generalizing for materials with significantly different textures than those in the data set, such as a weirdly textured foam. Lastly, we showed a performance of our trained unified model on generalizing to new gel site images of the materials in the training set, as well as new actions. Our model significantly outperforms the baseline on 71 materials. I would like to end this talk by thanking all the co-authors, our collaborators, and funding sources. Thank you for listening. <laughs>